the Charles Fry Academic Center, the pulse and pride of Lancaster Bible College, it's LBC Tonight, starring Derek Bigley. Joining Derek tonight, the Bigley family. Musical guest, Stuart Young. And also featuring the dudes with the groovy tunes, the Tunes. And your announcer, Preston Gaines. Thank you. thank you. Thank you all so much for being here, and, uh, and thank you to everyone else watching at home uh, or from somewhere on campus. Uh, well, uh, Halloween's over, sadly, but this entire week has been a celebration of the start of the Protestant Reformation exactly 500 years ago. In honor of that monumental event in church history, the LBC Chorale will be performing their fall stained glass series concert entitled A Mighty Fortress is Our God, penned by Martin Luther himself, if you didn't know that. Yes. <clears throat> These concerts will be tonight and tomorrow night over on the other side of campus in the Good Shepherd Chapel. So be sure to catch that concert, and uh, it's, it's going to be a good one. I mean, if you're, if you're watching this right now, you've already missed tonight's performance, so I guess you'll have to come tomorrow. But, uh, but you guys, it's not too late for you all, so don't disappoint me. <laughs> As a member of the LBC Chorale, I can tell you this has been a pretty incredible semester of preparation for this concert, and the Lord has been doing some pretty amazing things both in and through our choir in Spain last month and here in the States. My father, who directs the chorale and chamber singers here at LBC, has been putting in a lot of work to prepare all of us for this concert. And, and if you've never seen him do his thing before, it's, it's pretty entertaining watching him wave his arms up there. So that alone is worth the price of admission, so make sure you get your ticket. And, uh, and while I'm on the subject, I'm pretty sure my whole family's in the audience tonight. So Bigley fam, where are you at? Over here? Uh, that's pretty great. And Garvey's here <laughs> from the world. <laughs> Can I give you a hug? Hey! Oh my word! The joys of live TV, folks. So that's why I was supposed to stay in the green room at four o'clock. Gotcha. Fun. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's pretty great. Um, so Garvey's here, but I, I don't see Mom and Delaney. Where Where are they at? Do you Do you know what? Oh. Hey, hey, Delaney. Uh, my little sister, everyone. Uh, Delaney, what, what, uh, what, are you, what are you doing here? I, I had a seat reserved for you over there, so. Wait, wait, wait. You have a show? Yes. The, the LBC Tonight show. Don't you remember hearing me talk about that, like, all year? No, mm -mm, no. Do you even know how to run a show? <laughs> I, well, I think so. I mean, I'm doing it right now. I think it's going pretty well. Um, <laughs> All right, well, uh, you have fun with that. <laughs> whoa, 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 Missy, you think, you think you can do better? Mm. Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, tunes, help me out here. What is that? Mom? <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Anything you can be, I can be greater. Sooner or later, I'm greater than you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I can shoot a partridge with a single cartridge. I can get a sparrow with a bow and arrow. I can live on bread and cheese. And only on that? Yeah. So can a rat. Any note you can reach, I can go higher. Oh, I can sing any note higher than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Well, I guess I had biology going against me on that one, so. 
Anything you can buy, I can buy cheaper. I can buy anything cheaper than you. 50 cents? 40 cents. 30 cents. 20 cents. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Anything you can say, I can say softer. Oh, I can say anything softer than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can eat a snicker faster than a flicker. I can eat it quicker and get even sicker. I can open any safe without getting caught. Sure. That's what I thought, you crook. Any note you can hold, I can hold longer. Oh, I can hold any note longer than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, yes, you I can. Anything you can wear, I can wear better. In what you wear, I look better than you. In my shirt. In your tie. In my shoes. In your suit. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Anything you can say, I can say faster. I can say anything faster than you. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you yes, can. Yes, I can. No, you can. Yes, I can. No, you can. No, you can. No, you can. No, you can. I can jump a hurdle. I can wear a girdle. I can knit a sweater. I can wear it better. I can do most anything. Can you bake a pie? No. Neither can I. <laughs> any note you can sing, I can sing sweeter. I can sing any note sweeter than you. <clears throat> no, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't, can't, can't. Yes, I can, can, can. Yes, no, I can. can. Lady Bigley, ladies and gentlemen, and my mother, Kendra Bigley, on the piano. Stay tuned to see more members of the Bigley family show up on the show tonight, plus a special performance from the LBC legend, Stuart Young. I'm your host, Derek Bigley, and you're watching LBC, LBC Tonight. tonight. Well, in the words of the esteemed children's series, Veggie Tales, have we got a show for you. <laughs> Seriously though, you all picked a fun show to come to. Uh, tonight's guests include LBC dance professor and my sister, Danica Bigley, That's right? <laughs> Trust Performing Arts Center Executive Director, LBC Chorale and Chamber Singers Director, and Voice Faculty Chair, yes, this is still just one person, my father, Robert Bigley. <laughs> And finally, our guest musician, LBC alumnus and local artist, Stuart Young. He's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I know, I, I kind of threw off the, uh, the family groove there a little bit by throwing Stu in the mix, but uh, I've, I've known Stu for so long, he's practically family, so hey, it works. Can he uh, follow up your family is a question. Oh, he can. Yes, okay. he's, he's pretty stellar. <laughs> but before we get to all of that, Preston and I have a new segment we'd like to share with you. Now, uh, the inspiration for this segment came from uh, C3 counselor Tom Starr, uh, although we're definitely doing our own little twist on the idea, uh, and it addresses an issue that is very, very, very relevant, very, very relevant on our campus. Uh, so without further ado, it's time for top 10 signs you go to a ring by spring school. <laughs> now, now this, this definitely, after you guys. Oh, is that it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have a song for this? Because if so, we want to hear it. Yeah, no, no, let's hear it. Reasons why, ten reasons why. <laughs> that is perfect. You'll be okay. It's good. It's good. So good. <laughs> 
Uh, but uh, you. Yeah, we need to clarify what ring by spring is because. Yes. Like, well, because not everyone might know. Preston didn't know. Until not this everyone week. might know you what ring by know spring until is. This week, what it meant. So what ring by spring is is it's uh, a name that's associated with seniors who will be graduating college soon, um, who are looking to be married and hence get a ring by spring. By the so spring of their graduating semester. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So in case there's any confusion or you didn't know, that's what <laughs> ring by spring means. All right. So <laughs> let's get to it. Why don't you kick it off, Preston? I will. I will. Right. First sign that people, uh, that your school is a ring by spring school is people start referring to the couple by their last names. So like, oh, here comes the Donaldsons. You just like vomit everywhere. Like you just vomit. <laughs> just... Number two. Uh, the girl who just got proposed to is glowing for the next month, and the guy has steadily increasing bags under his eyes. <laughs> More than half the classes that you walk into are girls gawking over the newly engaged girl's engagement ring. It's true. That's <laughs> oh, look, it's so beautiful! I hate it. Do you see how ugly that ring was? <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All of your engaged or already married friends ask you about your relationship life as if it's nearly as important to you as it is to them. <laughs> you constantly debate deleting all of your social media so that you can stop seeing the same white Christmas light outside at night proposal. <laughs> hey, but I mean, there's a reason that everyone true, does that's that. That's very it's, true. It's so pretty. It's classy. It's, it is it's classy. Nice. It's, it's just there's a lot of, I mean, you're scrolling and, oh, there's, oh, oh, there's another one. <laughs> oh, oh, oh hey, it works. <laughs> it works. I mean, I think it has pretty much 100% success rate, which is probably why people choose to do Exactly. Yeah, anyways, yeah. moving on. If you say no to that, then <laughs> what do you, you have issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number eight. No, number six. You have to continuously remind yourself that these people around you came to the college to actually learn stuff, not to find their soulmate. Like, college is for an education, not True. in the other person, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven, you deep down know that the only reason you hate Ring by Spring is because you know you won't get one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, you can't go anywhere with someone of the opposite gender without everyone assuming you're a couple. Mm -hmm. This is very true. At it's unfortunate. It's very true. You don't get two seconds into freshman orientation without someone making a joke about getting a Mrs. degree. An MRS, get it, Mrs. Yeah, I it's don't. some awful. What, what is that? What's an MRS degree? In, um, like you go to school to get your like Mrs. Like like Mrs. Bigley, like an MRS. Oh, like... gotcha. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, who does who doesn't know the terminology hey. now? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Number ten, you exclusively exclusively refer to LBC as. Lancaster Bridal College. Mm, that is, that is, yeah. That's our newest segment. Top 10 signs you go to a ring by spring school. We'll be right back. Danica Bigley coming up after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to LBC Tonight. Our first guest attended LBC for two years, from 2011 to 2013, before transferring to one of the top dance conservatories in the nation at SUNY Purchase. Having graduated this past spring, she has returned to Lancaster and is the newest member of LBC's dance faculty, as well as the, founding, uh, the founder of Lancaster's first ever professional modern dance company, the Durang Dance Collective. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my big sister, Danica Bigley. <laughs> Thank you. This is fun. Uh, so you're you're walking like a pro. Yes. You just had an injury. I did. I, uh, I had knee surgery. Mm -hmm. My very first dance performance out of college, I tore my meniscus on stage. Kept dancing. Yep. Adrenaline's an amazing thing. Um, but I really messed up my knee. How, how far <laughs> into the, the piece was it? It was like a six minute duet with right. this great uh, choreographer named Emmanuel Williams. He and I worked on it together. And uh, about three minutes in, so like halfway through, yep. I felt it 
pop. Right. I actually thought I dislocated it, so I tried to pop it in while I kept dancing. <laughs> and uh, sorry for those who are squeamish about that. Um, and then, so by, by the end, I was like, oh, you know, this is really, really not good. And I kept dancing. At one point, I was carrying him on my back and like putting weight on it. Like, this is really bad. And uh, at the end, we're laying on the ground. And when I went to stand up to take my bows, I couldn't put weight on it. So he had to carry me backstage. And yeah. So dramatic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three minutes of dancing on a torn meniscus. Yeah. I think that's a Guinness World Record. We'll Football have to call players have no and, excuse, no, really. They, don't. You know? they really don't. They just cry and lay on the field right. until the trainer comes out. Right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so Durang Dance. This yes. is This is your newest project. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I had a, I can't remember her name now, the uh, commencement speaker at my college mm, was yes. Regina Spector, Regina Spector, thank you, and um, and she graduated from Purchase, and uh, she was telling, inspiring all of us that while we are auditioning for different dance companies or trying to get a record or whatever, to while you know get our survival job, but never stop making art. Mm. E you know, even if it's just that you're going to a club to do open mic, um, you know, even if you can't be on a stage performing, just never stop making art. Mm. Um, so the first week when I got back from school, I got my day jobs teaching and working in a cafe and catering, which didn't last very long. Um, <laughs> 12 hour long wedding shifts are really hard. Um, and then I started this collective. Um, I saw a need for emerging choreographers and artists to have um, the time and space to create and perform without completely depleting their pockets mm -hmm. just because for the sake of art. Um, so my father, Robert Bigley, has wanted to have a dance a resident dance group at the Trust for a while. Sorry, our father, Robert Bigley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and after producing my own senior uh, project and choreographing and um, you know doing costumes and lights for that, I felt like I had the network, the community, and the leadership skills to start something that would be housed at the Trust. So it's not a company. It's not the same people every time. Um, so we have six choreographers coming from New York, the friends of mine that I graduated with that I'm very close with. Um, and then we're also going to be uh, premiering the Luna Dance Company, which is Emmanuel's company. Gotcha. It's all um, Virginia-based East Coast dancers from George Mason University, which is where he came from. Right. So we've got our New York people, our George Mason people, and we're going to uh, rehearse for three days, just day and night. And then Saturday and Sunday, January 6th and 7th, we're going to put on a show at the Trust. That's going to so be awesome. So get it's your tickets at LancasterTrust.com. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true big week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and okay, so so that's the dress during dance, yes. and I'm super excited to see that performance. You. Um, besides that, you've also begun teaching at LBC, and yes. you will begin teaching other places as well. But yes. tell us a little bit about what teaching uh, ballet has been like at LBC thus far. Yeah. Um, so I'm teaching ballet one, and I was teaching ballet three before I got injured. Um, now it's hard for me to demonstrate for advanced students. So one of my best friends, Willa Williams, who just graduated George Mason, uh, is teaching for me while I'm injured. Um, but teaching ballet one has been so fun. It's mostly uh, freshmen and a couple upperclassmen who are um, auditing it. Uh, freshman musical theater majors. And right. so a lot of them have had some movement experience before, um, but it's just wonderful. They have the most, um, they, they ask the best questions. I've grown a lot as a teacher and as a dancer from their questions, which mm. is so cool. You learn so much when you become a teacher. Um, and I've been teaching for years, but it's, this is my first time teaching adults. I usually teach kids. Um, so it's really fun. I love seeing that like moment when it finally makes sense to them. And right. yeah, so that's exciting. That's super cool. And now, just this morning, you had uh, you had some special visitors in your 8 a.m. ballet class. Some very and, special uh, visitors. We were we were <laughs> able to catch it on camera. So uh, <laughs> I I think this is worth a look. Let's let's take a look at this clip real quick. Hey guys, so we're here at Encore Dance Studio, and we're about to take a class from my uh, my older sister Danica. It's uh, it's 8 a.m. and uh, we're ready to, to hit the dance floor. These guys are ready. <laughs> it's gonna be a good time. Here we go. Alright, uh, guys. Uh, what are you doing? What does it look like we're doing? We're lacing up our tap shoes. Tap shoes. <laughs> okay, you guys. First of all, you can't wear cleats in a studio, and second of all, this is a ballet class. So. Uh, so no, no taps. <coughs> I cannot work with your feet up there. All right, good, and switch over to the other side. Good, keep breathing. Oh, hey guys, come on in. Nice. Hi. Hey, guys. hey, everyone, how's it going? <laughs> good. Everyone, please welcome the cast and crew of the LBC Tonight Show.
feedback on his work ethic because he really didn't stick it out more than like one or two combinations so <laughs> along the way. Um, yeah, I think I was on the ground at one point. I'm not very flexible, uh, nor graceful, or coordinated to do any of this, but I could definitely see myself making a living in this in the future. Yeah, I've, uh, I've done quite a bit of dancing in my life. I mean, I actually danced semi-professionally for the, uh, the Cobalt Dance Company in Lancaster County. It's a pretty big deal. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to return to the fundamentals every once in a while and just, like, enjoy a nice, easy dance class. Uh, but, uh, I mean, the guys, the guys are troopers. They're doing a really good job. Um, clearly not as much dance experience as some people. But, um, <clears throat> but we're having fun. It's, it's been good. Really stretch here and come up. Was um, he? I really felt like the passion from him. He was really, um, you know, if you if you you gotta fake it till you make it. And he wasn't feeling the ballet and didn't know what was going on. So then he just went into like, you know, some West Side Story action. And I respect that. Like I, I do. Um, Preston. And then Derek was great. Derek was really great. I'm really proud of him. Like, yeah, it really, you could tell that it just came back. It's like riding a bike. Step to your left, cross behind, and bow or curtsy. Yes, good. And step to the left, cross behind, and curtsy. Good. And applause for your classmates. Well, thank you so much for letting us crash your class. You're welcome. You're uh, welcome. I know we all enjoyed that, Preston especially. And, uh, so proud. <laughs> so, Jenica, thank you for joining me on the show today. And uh, I look forward to seeing what God does with you in Lancaster at LBC and with the Drang Dance Collective. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm really proud of you. So, Thanks. Yeah. Proud of you, too. Thank you. <laughs> Danica Bigley, folks. <laughs> Coming up after the break, we'll be joined by my father, Dr. Robert Bigley. More fun stuff and a few surprises still to come. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Our next guest is a musical genius, and that's not just bias talking. Uh, he has a Master of Music in, in Conducting from the Eastman School of Music and a Doctorate in Choral Conducting from the University of Washington. He directs the LBC Chorale and Chamber Singers and holds the position of Executive Director for the Trust Performing Arts Center in downtown Lancaster. He's an incredible performer and teacher and a pretty amazing dad. Folks, put your hands together for the one and only Dr. Robert Bigley. <laughs> Thanks for, thanks for coming on my 
my show. Thank I appreciate you. it. Nice plant you have here. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a real survivor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, re I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show, especially considering the busyness of this semester for you. Um, you have a lot going on. I do. Tell us a little bit about what <laughs> this semester has oh, looked like for you so far. Sure. Well, um, we. Uh, Besides being the director of the Trust Performing Arts Center, uh, which has its own season, and LexterTrust.com. <laughs> the Durang Dance Collective is coming in January. Um, uh, as you said, I'm also the director of Choral Studies. And not only the, the Chorale and the Chamber Singers, but also the Women's Chorus. Oh, that's right. Yes. That started the semester. Yes. And they've named themselves the Eves of Eden, mm. because we, we're on Eden Road here. True. See, it's, it wasn't quite clever enough for us to actually use the name, but it's a, They're it's officially a the, the women's Thank chorus, right? Thank you. I was looking at that camera, just, and then the red light came on. I was like, OK, now. <laughs> now. <laughs> Shout out to the women's chorus. Eves of Eden, they're awesome. Um, uh, we just got back, sorry. We, uh, we just got back from Spain. We yes. actually, we thought we were going to one country for, for tour, but we ended up going to two, because oh, while true. we were there, in Catalonia, they decided they were on, they were on their own country. So yes. we uh, did two concerts in Barcelona and a concert in Madrid in between. And uh, it was an incredible experience. And God worked in and through us mm. uh, in ways that we never could have anticipated. So that was great. And now uh, tonight, we are doing the same concert that we did in Barcelona, um, plus one more piece, because why not? Right. Uh, so, uh, so tonight and tomorrow. Uh, you can get those tickets at lbc.edu slash events. True. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I should use that. But it's, it's just a prop. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Dad, besides uh, the, uh, the administrative positions and, and the directing and teaching positions that you hold, you're, you're also a performer. You know, when you when you find time for that, right. and you know, so tell us a little bit about what growing up was like, and the opportunities you had as a child, and then what you more recently accomplished this this summer in Lancaster. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow! Uh, so uh, my my mom, uh, shout out to Lynn Groninger. Um, this was, is the family episode, so just yeah, this is yeah yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody else watches. Well, this, this could be a family video. Hey, Christmas. We have um, <laughs> our annual family video that right, we do, that we do every, every year. year. Yeah. <laughs> True. Why not? Uh, so my mom uh, was great. I was, uh, she was a single mom, and she uh, provided all these great opportunities for me to do stuff, especially in the arts. And so I grew up as a child actor. I was on television at age eight and uh, did all sorts of stuff. And then, like all child actors, I hit my awkward stage. Um, mine lasted about 30 years. And so. Uh, <laughs> So then when I was an adult, I started acting again. And uh, most recently, I had my, my first uh, performance at the Fulton Theater right. in, in Lancaster. I was in, I was in Newsies. Yeah. And, um, and I was one of the oldsies in Newsies. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that was, that was a blast. It was really an amazing experience. Hmm. Yeah. It was super fun to watch. Yeah, I love that musical, and you were great. And, you. Uh, but you also did some professional acting while we lived in Seattle. Right. Just shout out to the Seattle people. Um, <laughs> there they are. And you, <laughs> <laughs> this is just ridiculous. It was your idea. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Does this feel forced to you? It feels forced. Anyway, so and while in Seattle, you uh, you did the uh, the musical Charlie Brown. Yes. Uh, and and performed the role of Schroeder, which you did then which later. I did later. Yeah. I did. I performed that role in high school. Like so like said. carrying the banner. Yes. Yes. And back uh, to newsies. Back to newsies. <laughs> <laughs> so so in in light of that truth of us both having played that role, I was thinking it would be fun for uh, for us to to perform a number from that show uh, since we both know it. So I'm. We'll have to decide who gets to play Schroeder eventually. Uh, but, um, rock, paper, scissors? Sure. We could do that. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out another way. We'll figure it out another way. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll do that right All after right. the break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Homework. 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 Yuck. Yuck. Uh,
book report on Peter a Rabbit. Book Peter Peter Rabbit. A book report on Peter Rabbit. A book report on Peter Rabbit. A book report on Peter Rabbit. Rabbit. <clears throat> Peter Rabbit is a stupid book about a stupid rabbit who steals vegetables from other people's gardens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh, eighty-three to go. The name of the book about which this book report is about is Peter Rabbit, which is about this rabbit. I found it very, I like the part where it was, uh, it reminded me of Robin Hood. And the part where little John jumped from the rock to the sheriff from Nottingham's back. And then Robin and everyone swung from the trees in a sudden surprise attack. And they captured the sheriff and all of his goods and they carried him back to the camp in the woods. The sheriff was gassed the dinner at all, but he wriggled away. He sounded the call, his men rushed in, and the arrows flew. Peter Rabbit is sort of that kind of thing too. The other people's name was McGregor. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, oh! In examining a book, such as Peter Rabbit, it is important that the superficial characteristics of its deceptively simple plots should not be allowed to blind the reader to the otherwise superficial fabric of its deeper motivations. In this report, I plan to discuss the sociological implications of family pressures so great as to drive an otherwise moral rabbit to perform acts of thievery which he consciously knew were against the law. I also hope to explore the personality of Mr. McGregor in his conflicting roles as farmer and humanitarian. Peter Rabbit is established from the start as a benevolent if hero. If I start writing now when I'm not really rested, it could upset my thinking, which is no good at all. I'll get a fresh start tomorrow, and it's not due till Wednesday, so I'll have all of Tuesday unless something should happen. Why does this always happen? I should be outside playing, getting fresh air and sunshine. I work best under pressure, and there'll be lots of pressure if I wait till tomorrow I should start writing now but if I start writing now when I'm not really rested it could upset my thinking which is no good at all the name of the rabbit was Peter 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 yes down came the staff on his head smashed and Robin fell like a sack full of light grass the sheriff laughed and he left him for dead ha but he was wrong 35 36 37 38 39 40 just then an arrow flew in Bang! it was a sign for the fight to begin Sing! and then it looked like the sheriff would win ha but not for long away they ran just like rabbits, who run a lot, as you can tell from the story of Peter Rabbit, which this report is about. <laughs> How do they expect us to write a book report of any quality in just two days? exerted on him by his deeply rooted rivalry in Flopsy, Bopsy, and Cocktail. We start writing now when I'm About not really rested. It's what could the otherwise immoral rabbit do for our next week? Theory! Oh, oh, the sociological implications of oh, family oh, practices oh, of the oh, first thing after dinner also. Simple plot, really.
A book report on Peter Rabbit. <laughs> Come on over, Mom. My family, everyone. Special thanks to Mom for killing it on the keys tonight. We'll be right back with Stuart Young and one more live performance to end the show after this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Our final guest this evening is an LBC alum and is well known uh, as a performer in Lancaster. He currently works at Prince Street Cafe and travels and gigs all over the East Coast and the rest of the country playing his music whenever he gets the chance. Uh, he's a talented songwriter, performer, and friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Stuart Young. <laughs> Man, thanks so much for coming yeah, on the show. Yeah, thank you. This uh, is great. I'm not sure I've actually really seen you for more than maybe two minutes at a time, other than last year when you were on my radio show. I know. Whatever yeah. happened to that? Uh, I kind of fizzled out. Oh, great. You know, not great ratings and other stuff. But somehow I ended up on a TV show. So I and really now I'm what, back here. And now you're back. So. <laughs> Hopefully the ratings don't come down. <laughs> not at all. YouTube. Anyway. <clears throat> so last uh, last time I had you on the show, mm -hmm. uh, you you had released a newer song, I believe. Um, and we played that on the show, and you played a couple other songs. Yeah. But I've I've heard rumors of the uh, that you will be coming out with a new album sometime soon. Yeah, starting in I wonder who told you those rumors. I don't know. <laughs> Me. Um, no, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it's been it's been a really crazy ride. Um, I've been in and out of the studio for five years now, and I'm working on my latest record. I'm going to be doing a, a single with the same producer as I did for my last record, Hold On. I'll be doing it with Jeremy Casella in Nashville. Okay. Um, working with some people that I should not be in the same room with. And it's just <laughs> stupid. Um, but yeah, I'm a knucklehead on the road, and the Lord just is like, all right, keep going. And I just keep getting um, further and further along. And yeah. who knows where I'll end up next year, but it's just, it's a good ride. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, and I yeah. love your music, and I love that you're, you're, you're still writing, you're still recording, you're still performing, because you, you've got such a great sound. You've, you're a great mm. songwriter. Well, thank you. Um, so I'm looking <laughs> forward to all these people <laughs> get to hear you tonight, so that's going to be fun. Oh, um, but uh, so last time you were in Nashville, something mm -hmm. funny, well, not really funny happened, but oh, you got sick. But there's uh, a funny story that came out of that. What was the funny story? Well, was the, it the, there was something involving Lay's potato chips. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess like there's a trick. Um, if you have like really like a bad cold or you have what I had, bronchitis, um, I guess Shania Twain, out of all people, found that Lay's chips, like you just eat them by the handful, like right like after every take, you just shove a fistful of them in your mouth. So I got so, I can't even look at a bag of chips anymore. <laughs> it's not But not you nice. made it through recording your album. With bronchitis. Yeah, there's a couple songs on there that definitely sound like I have bronchitis, but I'm just like, oh, I'm just I'm a weary traveler. Huh? It's the road, really, not, not the sickness of my lungs. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> well, uh, you're not sick tonight, and so... Uh, no, it's funny, though. This Pennsylvania is the worst weather on the planet, is. so it's been, like, up and down. It is. So, therefore, I feel like today, actually, my nose is like a faucet at work. And I was like, oh, man, I just got to, you know, not get it in people's coffee. Right. Um, right. <clears throat> yeah. Did, did That's what they call the snot rocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Pull a shot of that down. All right. Cool. Oh, boy. Uh, steam some milk. It's great. Um, <laughs> just like that sandwich you just ate. It's right. wonderful. It base probably tastes similar. All right. So, <clears throat> great. for real, anyway, that so, didn't actually uh, happen. It's fine. So, so I'm not sick <laughs> <laughs> not, not which is good. But I do have really cool socks on. I don't know if you can see Ooh, that. Those are cool socks. I actually didn't coordinate them. This one just has pink ones, but this one has multicolored ones, so it's kind of cool. There's one pink one. Stu, we're trying to run an interview. Sorry. Here, so. <laughs> I, was, I thought like people were like always about their fashion when they go on these True, shows. it I'm is like, true. I've had this jacket for like six years, and I haven't changed my pants in a while. So. <laughs> actually, funny story. My pants ripped on the way here, and like that's why I'm kind of cross legged. <laughs> I'm just like, oh man, I got in my car, I was late. I was like, oh man, what do I do? I can't go back. I'll have a new keypad on my door. It'll take me 20 minutes to get inside my door anyway. So here I am, cross-legged. 
It's okay, I forgot a belt, so I'm wearing Oliver's belt right now. Oh, nice. Way to go, Oliver, wherever you are. Sorry, right, he's the real hero. Great. But, uh, anyway, so, uh, so what? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, so, I don't music, do this often. Music is your <laughs> thing. Uh, what, what song will you be performing for us um, I actually wrote a new song last week, um, and it actually doesn't have a title yet, so if you guys at the end of the song are like, uh, that's the title, hmm. then that'd be great. Um, any help is appreciated. Um, my new record is gonna be called Divided. Uh -huh. um, it's kind of talking about the tensions of the Christian walk when it doesn't go well hmm. um, and you're, you're struggling. I think a lot of people um, in the Christian circles I grew up in, they're not comfortable saying, I'm struggling. They're like, oh, I struggled with that. That's a thing in the past. Hmm. But like, let's be honest, it's happening right now. Hmm. Happened yesterday. And right now I've been going through a really rough patch over the past year, um, just in my faith and questions and my actions. And like, I know the right thing to do. Hmm but I keep finding myself being an idiot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the song kind of asked the question. One of the, in the chorus, it says, um, there's hope on the horizon, but I don't think I'm going to chase her because I've got a simple life on my own. Like, I have a simple life on my own because I'm content with what I have in my hands. Like, mm -hmm. oh, no, it's safe. I, I am doing what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so the song wrestles with that mm -hmm. and just that aspect of seeing hope. I have grew up in the Christian world, in the Christian cycle, and um, knowing what that looks like, but... Um, not always chasing it as well as I should. Mm. So, mm. I hate to be a downer. <laughs> That's why I got all the laughs out of the beginning, so then we're all sad at the end. It's okay, we'll remember the good times. <laughs> but I, no, in all honesty, Sue, I, I love how vulnerable you are in your music mm. and how you always, you always just present truth um, in, in what you write. And so I've always appreciated yeah. listening to oh, the you. songs you write because of that. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to let you get ready to perform now. It takes a and, lot. Uh, I'm just going to waddle out of here. I know, but, <laughs> so, but, uh, <laughs> So, so thank you for joining me on the show thank tonight. You. And, uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, so when we come back, Stuart Young will be performing his newest song from his album, his upcoming album, Divided. Yes. We'll be right back. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for being guinea pigs for this song, too. Appreciate it. Well, I'm 26, and I'm feeling sick from alcohol. Is this a matter of the heart or just something to get me started? Searching for you. Cause just as the seasons change, my heart is growing. There's hope on the horizon I know, I know, I know It's all my fault Well, I'm 26 And I'm feeling sick I'm running circles in the same my father always said, son, you gotta learn how to run away from everything that holds you back. There's hope on the horizon, and I don't think I will chase her, cause I've got a simple life here on my own. There's you.
Well, there's something in the distance, and I know what's in between us, and I know. Thank you. Young, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you so much, man. Thank you, it was wonderful. <clears throat> my thanks also to my family for being here. They had to skip out and I had to get changed because there's a concert coming up this evening. And uh, I, I love my family, so I'm really thankful for them coming tonight. Uh, we had a lot of fun on the show tonight and I hope that you all did too. Uh, so be sure to tune in next week to see LBC Tonight Season 1 finale. Until then, I'm Derek Bigley, and you've been watching LBC Tonight. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you guys.